Today we start something new. My name is Neiman and welcome to Corpse Factory. I am back playing these anime games, man. I said before that I wanted to stop playing anime games, but honestly, they just keep pulling me back in. They keep finding a way to make things interesting to me and I feel like playing them. So now here we are, we're back. We're playing Corpse Factory. Factory. If you haven't already, please subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a single video or stream. I stream on this channel, I make videos, I'm making a bunch of content. I'd really like you to enjoy that. You can also join my Discord to stay up to date and keep in touch with me and the rest of my community. I'd really love to have you. That link is in the description down below. And all my other social media links, my Twitter, my Instagram, my TikTok are down below in the description. Please go check me out. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and follow me on TikTok build a community together without further ado though enough talk it's time to get into the first episode of a new journey i hope you guys will enjoy as much i feel like i will enjoy corpse factory enjoy the What the fuck is this? Who is this clown? What is going on? This song is a banger though. What is ha what's gonna happen in this story if they showing all this? Is that a gal? Oh, we might be locked in. Hold on. The gal is driving. Oh yeah, we're definitely locked in. We are locked. What is going on? What's happening here? What's happening here? I don't know what's going on in the story, bro. I literally just started this shit for the first time. I don't know what's happening, but maybe some cool. What is going on? What is this? What am I looking at? Oh, people getting murdered in this game? Oh no, whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening right now? Yo, what? Yo, what is going on, bro? Bro, what's happening, bro? That was demonic. That was demonic. That was demonic. That was absolutely demonic. I don't know what that was about, bro. I don't know what that was about. The lyrics is crazy, though. Lyrics is crazy. Okay. Okay. Um, new game, I guess. We just get it. We just get straight into it. it ain't, ain't no, ain't no point. Ain't no point in racing any time. Let's just get into it. The prologue. Emi Katsuno. Okay, I'm with it. Let's, let's get it. Hopefully nothing's in the right hand corner or else I have to move this box. This box is too fucking big. Got to, got us, got to make it smaller. Got to make it smaller. Wait, 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 go back, go back. I know those bitches have been talking about me behind my back. They flash those fake smiles when I walk past. They wave half-heartedly and say things like, oh, hi, Emmy, or you're the only one brave enough to pull off that look. You calling them fake bitches? They fake? They fake as hell? That's what's going on? They're all two-faced lying assholes. I hate each and every one of them. Damn. Hate's a strong word, though. Amino, Sakiko, Kurosawa, just look at them. Everything about them is fake. Fake lips, fake nails, fake smiles, fake personalities. Oh, we can hide shit? Oh yeah, it's it's lit. It's lit. 
Look, I'll be the first to admit that I'm a fake bitch too, but even I know I was not as bad as them. I'm not horrible to every person I meet, just the ones I don't like. Well, damn, sheesh. Actually, you know what? You know what? I can I can control Z this, right? Yeah. Let's make it a little there, right there. Ugh, it's not fair that I have to work with them. I just wanted a part-time job, something breezy and casual. How was I supposed to know these delinquents would obsess over tormenting me? Amino is unbearable, probably the least terrible of the three. She's a year younger than me and acts like she's some famous pop idol. But she's a dropout just like me, working in this dead-end part-time job just so her parents don't kick her out of their house. She spends her evenings singing at underground bars and hanging out with shady talent agents who swear they can promote her and make her the next big pop star. She gets taken advantage of time and time again, but never seems to learn her lesson. I don't know if it's, she's a stupid or if she really thinks she's on the right track to becoming famous. Why don't you just slide this bitch into the corner? There you go. That's a little easier. Sakiko is the kind of straight laced girl that you see at every school studying her ass off to earn her parents approval. The type of girl that always has the best grades, but never really has any friends. She's the kind of girl that graduates, then the reality of the real world knocks her on her ass and she just she realizes she actually has no clue what she's doing, just like the rest of us. So she settles for the first crappy job she can find and then suddenly it's three years later and she's still slaving away for asshole managers just to make ends meet. Instead of being humbled by her station in life, Sakiko decides to take her anger out on everyone around her. I've seen her slap customers out of frustration. How is she not fucking fired? What, what? What? You can't just tell me this and act like that shit is normal, bro. How is she not fired? Get her out of here. Rumor has it that she strangled her boss on one occasion. Apparently, he's too afraid to fire her now. I don't blame him. I'm afraid of her, too. I can't be afraid of no high school, bro. Barely three years out of high school and you over here scared of her? Boy, if you don't tell this girl to hit the fucking road. And then this girl, Sawa. I could write an entire blog on all the things I hate about her. She's pretty, but she's very aware of it. She seems to have a new sugar daddy every few weeks. Some poor old fool that she strings along and milks dry. She must be nearing 30, but as all her friends are still in senior high school, it's more than a little, whoa, 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 whoa. It's more than a little weird. They hang out around the train station, bullying homeless people and shoplifting from the convenience store. I'm pretty certain that she's done time once or twice. Kurosawa was just an all-around terrible person. She makes Amino and Sakiko look like saints in comparison. Honestly, I couldn't ask for a worse group of co-workers. Finally, there's me. What does you look like? Emi Katsuno, university dropout, part-time cashier, and up to my ears in debt. I live in a small apartment in a bad neighborhood just to keep my head above water. My apartment building is filled with deadbeats, loan sharks, junkies, perverts, you name it. By some miracle, I managed to snatch up the best apartment in the worst building. Although the place is nice, the rent is questionably low, I'm fully expecting the landlord to wander in one day and demand more money. Or murder me. I'm constantly worried about money, worried about my safety, worried about what the hell I'm supposed to be doing with my life. As if that wasn't bad enough, I have to work four days a week with the three worst girls I've ever met in my life. Why do they keep... Whatever. Today is no different from any other day. Amino greets me at the door, her disgustingly puffy and pouty lips pulled back in a half snarl, half smile. I can smell the sickly sweet scent of too much lip gloss from her ten feet away. Oh, hi, Emmy. You're late again, you know. This shit is voice acting? Oh, we are lit. I don't have to talk. I don't have to talk. Let's fucking go. Bitch. Yeah, sorry. Just let me past. I'll go clock in. Ooh. Emmy looking kind of fine herself. Hold on. Whatever. Kurosawa wants to see you. Can you, like, just go see her? Fine. Amino walks off. I look around for Kurosawa. The stale stench of cigarette smoke eventually overwhelms the lingering scent of lip gloss in the air and leads me to her location. You wanted me? Katsuno, I need you to process a big refund. Don't mess it up, okay? It's for a regular customer. Okay, I can do that. What am I refunding? There's a bunch of shirts on the counter. Just ring them up and refund them for cash. You can leave the money in the envelope under the register. Fine, I'll take care of it. Thanks. I'm going for a smoke break. I decide to clock in before processing the refund. I won't be paid for this shift if the company doesn't know I came into work. I go behind the counter and retrieve the sign-in booklet. I flip to today's date and fill in my details. Done and done. The shirts that Kurosawa mentioned are lying half over the counter. I pick them up and scan each one. They're not cheap. 
The first rings up at 11,000 yen and the next is 13,000. Okay, so that's... What is that? What is that actually? 13,000, what is that? $11? No. <laughs> there are six shirts all up, each one a little more expensive than the last. They don't look worn and the tags are intact. I'm supposed to ask for a receipt or proof of purchase before making a refund, but the customer is obviously not here. Besides, the request came directly from Kurosawa, my superior, so I can't exactly refuse. The refund goes through the system successfully and the cash drawer opens up. I count out the correct amount of money in 10,000 yen bills and it pops an elastic band around the cash and put it in an envelope. Also print a copy of the refund receipt and slip it in with the cash. Job done. I slide the envelope back under the register and lean against the counter. Surveying the store, I can see that there aren't any customers around. It's still early in the morning, after all. We don't usually get much business around until lunchtime. I hover around the register for a while, biting my nails and staring at the clock to pass time. Kurosawa eventually returns from her smoke break. Half an hour must have passed by now. Who does she think she is? Finished that refund? Yeah, I did it just like you said. Okay. She rummages around underneath the cash register and pulls out the envelope stuffed with cash. Her fingers flip through it quickly, counting each note, and she nods as though satisfied. Good work, Katsuno. I'll pass this on to the customer next time they come in. No problem. You're not anyway, passing on shit. I'll take over the cash register for a while. You want to go tidy up stock? Yeah, okay. I'm not too bothered if Kurosawa wants to take over my register duties. It's boring standing around. I'd much rather be doing something than nothing. As I head towards a rack of untidy jackets, Sakiko bumps into me. Sorry. I didn't see you there. Sorry? Did she actually just apologize to someone? Sakiko to the customer abuser? <sighs> That's fine. You okay? I haven't been sleeping real well. I'm just tired, that's all. Well, um... Get some rest, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Look, while I've got you here, I, I know I haven't really been easy to get along with lately. I've got my own personal issues, but that's no reason to take it out on you and the other girls. We apologizing already? I can't believe what I'm hearing here. Sakiko has had a change of heart? So I'm resigning as of today. I don't deserve this job. I wanted to apologize and make sure there's no bad blood between us. This game that's fire. I don't know what to say. I never expected this from you. Yeah. If you're resigning, do you have another job lined up? No, not yet, but I need to work on myself first. I have a lot to think about. What is g well, this I mean, game is heat. As long as you're sure about this. Uh, bro, this is fire. Hold on. I just. I am. Oh, wow. In that case, then thank you for apologizing. I forgive you. Thank you, Emmy. Well, until next time, then. Yeah. Until next time. Wow. Sakiko takes her leave. I'm still a bit taken aback by her sudden personality change. Did I misjudge her from the start? No, well, that can't be it. She has a history of abusing customers and coworkers. No way I imagined all that. Regardless, I'm actually kind of glad she's trying to get a grip on her life. I hope everything works out for her. She's resigning today, then I suppose the only two terrible co-workers left are Armano and Kurosawa. Okay. <laughs> she immediately went back to the negativity. All good. Whatever. It's okay. I glance at Amano, who is standing by the door waiting to greet customers. She has a vacant expression on her face, like always. I then look towards the register where Kurosawa should have been standing, but she's not there. Didn't she offer to take over register duties for me? Where the hell does she disappear to? I wander behind the counter. The register doesn't look like it's been touched. Out of curiosity, I slide my hand under the register. And the cash stuff envelope is gone. No sign of it. The receipt from the refund is lying on the floor. I've been down and picked it up. It's a standard refund receipt stating the value of the transaction. My name is signed at the bottom since I was the one who processed it. The refunded money is gone and so is Kurosawa. Did she? No, she couldn't have. Surely she wouldn't have. Oh, yeah, you just got fucked over, Emmy. Oh, my God. Emmy just got cooked. Surely she wouldn't have run off with the money. No one would be stupid enough to risk their job over that, would they? Uh, there's Katsuno. You should go ask her about it. Huh? Kurosawa is still here. She seemed to pop up from nowhere. Katsuno. A word, if you please. Ah, Hirota. The manager of the store. He normally spends his time in the office out back. So it's kind of unusual to see him here. What could he want with Kurosawa me? Kurosawa was tending to the register when she noticed the system flagged a large refund. You just got cooked. Oh my god. You know anything about oh it? Oh my god. 
She just got put on. She just put. Yeah, yeah. Kurosaka's fucked. Well, yeah, I processed a big refund this morning. Is that so? Do you have the receipt? Uh, here. I hand him the transaction receipt that is still between my fingers. He looks over it once, then twice, his eyebrows furrowing. This is quite a large refund. No wonder the system flagged it. Did you get approval from Kurosawa before processing this? Kurosawa was the one who asked me to process it, sir. I never even spoke to the customer that it was intended for. She about to get fucked over. That's not true, Hiroto. I told you. I told you. Anything about this I refund. told you. She's getting fucked over. This bitch crazy. I hate her already. That's fucked. What? Where is the refunded money now? Well, I put it in an envelope underneath the register, but... There's no money here, sir. She's lying to you. Oh, that's so cooked. No money to be found. And Katsuno, you're the one who signed off. That is so fucked. Oh, my lord. Yeah, I did sign it, but... You're going to have to tell the truth, Katsuno. Did you take the money? Don't make me get the police involved. That's so fucked. Wait, hang on. Do you think I stole it? Kurosawa asked me to process the refund and leave the cash in an envelope. It's nonsense. That's simply irresponsible. It's not safe to leave cash out of the register. I would just kill you. <laughs> I, I, I think I'd honestly just kill you. I don't know. <laughs> I feel my stomach beginning to sink. What exactly is happening here? You know what's happening. At once, Katsuno. Yeah. I didn't steal the damn money. If anyone stole it, it was that bitch Kurosawa. Let's get it popping. Let's get this shit popping. Enough. We're not going to stand here and argue about this like bickering school children. Oh, you a bitch, Hiroto. Sachiko. Like a... Wow. Like a servant sleeking out of the shadow, Sachiko slides beside Hiroto. Yeah, Sirita? Did you witness Katsuno take an envelope of cash from the register? That is so fucked. Oh, yes, sir. Just this morning. She acted like she was processing a refund, then... That's so cash. fucked. I meant to bring it to your attention sooner, but... Okay, yeah, all three of these bitches gotta die. All good. Sakiko, that bitch, she hasn't changed at all. She just sold me out. Managed to catch a glimpse of Kurosawa smirking at Sakiko. They nod in unison and giggle. Are they in this together? Are they throwing me under the bus so just so they can steal some cash? I can't believe it. I'm so fucking angry. There you have it. A witness to your crime. Kurosawa. If you would kindly call the police. Yes, sir. Wait just a minute! I scream louder than intended, but my blood is boiling. I can barely control myself. I didn't steal any money. Why don't you check the security cameras, huh? You'll see that I'm innocent. Oh, you know those cameras haven't worked in months, right? I suppose nowadays they're mostly just for show. That shit is so convenient. Oh my god. Yeah, all these bitches gotta die. All three of them. If Hirata really wants me to, I could go double check just to be sure. Though, I think that would just be a waste of time. Thank you, but that will no, be No, no, no manager ever does this. No manager ever does this. No manager ever does this. No manager ever... Kurosawa's eyes narrow as she gazes at me wickedly. Amano, please show everybody what you found. You got it, boss. I didn't even realize Amano was part of this discussion. She is le leering at me disgustingly and slapping an envelope against her open palm. Found this wad of cash in Katsuno's locker out back. I can feel the blood drain from my face. I haven't even been put out. I haven't even been out the back today. Are they all in this against me? Did they plant evidence to get me in trouble? You're lying! I haven't even had time to go out back today! I mean, what do you want me to say? You think the cash just appeared out of nowhere? All three of these bitches gotta die. All three of them. All the three of them. You, all Katsuno. three of them. No, all four of them. No, we. Since we located the money, I won't have you arrested. But you will not step foot in this store ever again. Do I make myself clear? You're fired, and I will make sure you never work in any of our stores again. I mean, honestly, that's kind of a wait. Hold on. Honestly, honestly. Honestly, you're not getting arrested and you just you you said you already hated these co fuck it. You might as well go. Fuck it. I'm speechless. I can't even process my thoughts. I'd be fucking jumping for joy. I'd be like, all right, bet, fuck all y'all, I'm out of here. The quiet giggling and snicking or snickering of Kuros Sakiko and Amano buzzes in my ears until my skull feels like it's gonna burst. Hiroto grabs my shoulder and tries to lead me outside, but I jerk away and stumble backwards. My back slams into the glass window in the front of the store. Thankfully the glass is shatter, but I can immediately feel a bruise forming. I push myself forward, regain my balance, and duck towards the sliding door. See you around, Emmy. Oh well, 
I guess not, hey? <laughs> don't, 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 don't. I blink tears under my eyes as I dash through the store's front door. Hey, we good. It's all good. It's all good. Now let's go get a gun and get the get back. That's what we need to do, okay? That's what needs to happen. We need to go get the gun. We need to go get the Glock, okay? The Glock with the switch. Put a switch on a shotgun if you need to and go get your get back, okay? Get back, nigga. Get back. That's what we trying to do right now. The fuck, fuck these bitches. What they talking about, bro? My anger and fear and anxiety get the better of me, and it's a good five or ten minutes before I realize that I've been running aimlessly through the shopping mall. I reach a hand to my eyes and wipe away the moisture and take a deep breath. I look around, trying to get my bearings. It's escalators. At least I know where I am. It's all good. It's all good. I mean, we just go get another job. We chilling. We chilling. I need to sit down and compose myself. If I don't calm down, I might be tempted to return to the store and start punching those three absolute assholes. No, we're not going back until we got the gun, okay? We need to make a plan, Form formulate a plan. With my head down, I blindly charge towards a small seating area. I collide head first with somebody in front of me without scream thinking I scream out in anger. Watch where you're going. Oh, come on, you can't be treating a girl like this. Wait, this girl, I know her from somewhere. Katsuna, is that you? Uh huh? I know you. Have we met? Yes, of course. We graduated from senior high school together. Remember? Did we? This shit's so sad, bro. Senior high school was more than a year ago. Feels like a different lifetime. How does she expect me to remember that? Hmm, maybe... Yeah, you're Sato, right? Aoi Sato? That's me. You do remember. Well, kinda. Sorry. I've had a crappy day. I just got fired, so I'm not thinking straight. I'm so glad this is voice acted. I get to save my voice. It's just great. You got fired. I'm really sorry. Um, you bumped into me pretty hard. Are you hurt? I'm fine. Always so nice. What the fuck? Always rubbing her arm tenderly. I figure I must have injured her, but I'm really not in the mood to stand here and apologize to some old acquaintance. Okay, Emmy, you being a bitch right now. I have to go. Excuse me. Oh, um, okay. I push past Aoi. Unexpectedly, the shy and spineless girl grabs my arm and stops me from leaving. Her grip is surprisingly strong. Hatsuno, you said that you just got fired. Is that true? Wait, yeah, I'm pissed off about it. Tell me what happened. Why are you so interested? We can go get that get back. I just thought maybe I could help us all. She trying to help you shoot. Let's go. Come. You can't help. Some bitch set me up. She stole a bunch of money and made me take the fall. Uh, I see. Are you done here? Can I leave now? Sorry for keeping you. Yeah, okay. Once again, I turn to leave, but I always next words manage to catch my interest. You know, if someone got you fired, there is a way you could get revenge. Revenge? What is this girl on about? Does she have some way for me to get back at Kurosawa? What am I thinking? I can't even step foot back in the store. My chance to get any kind of justice just doesn't exist. Revenge? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, hell no. You're not going cold on me now. Tell me what you meant. Oh, okay. But let's talk quietly. There may be a way for you to get back at whoever got you fired. Wait, wait. Have you heard the rumors of Corpse Girl's website? Oh, I'm in here. Corpse Girl? Who is that? Sounds like some death metal band. I'm locked in. What's it? I will ignores my comment and continues on with her speech. They say that if you visit Corpse Girl's website, you can request a death. Great, because I got four of them. I got four of them to request. Let's get it. Request a death? What is this girl ranting about? Hey, hang on, start over. I'm I'm completely lost. Yeah, I want him dead. Aoi frowns, a look of annoyance on her face. Say somebody wrongs you, and you want to get revenge on them. Go on. Rumors state that you can visit Corpse Girl's website and fill out a form in order to request a specific person's death. Okay, I'm gonna do that four times. This Corpse Girl. Is she, like, a hitman or something? No one knows the truth. All I know is that her victims always receive a photo of their own corpse before they die. Oh, this is crazy. How is that possible? Oh, this game go is this game is wild. What's I don't know. Game's this game wild. First off, I don't know how long I'm gonna go, so let me get this. 
easy, easy. And this this kind of crazy. I've been wanting to use the website for some time. There's somebody, somebody that I'd be happier without. But I'm not brave enough to go through with it. Still, I want to know if the rumors are true. She's trying to get her own get back. We need, we need to test the shit for science. We have to test the shit for science. This whole thing sounds sketchy, risky. Are the police gonna come get me if I go on this website? I I've got no idea. Well, thanks, I guess. How he doesn't make a further attempt to stop me when I turn on my heel and walk away. I don't know what to make of her suggestion. Can such a website even exist? The ability to request a death just sounds so unbelievable. And yet, yeah, I'm, I'm, we in here, we in here. Emmy, we, I find myself unable to get the possibilities out of my mind as I make my way towards the train station. Corpse Girl, a website tailored for revenge. I could dob in Kurosaka Sakiko Amino. If I could remain anonymous, then no matter what happens, whatever fate befalls those girls, it couldn't be traced back to me. I start to wonder if ordering the deaths of a few girls simply because they got me fired is a little extreme. Although they're not exactly saints, they're closer to human garbage more than anything else. They've always been hostile towards me. I'll probably be doing the world a favor if I had them all killed. If they screwed me over without a second thoughts, who knows what they might do to the next unsuspecting victim. Yeah, killing all three of them is the right thing to do. Removing them from the planet will prevent them from hurting anyone else. My heart begins the race. She just justified killing me in there. Let's go. Oh, this is a beautiful, uh, this is a beautiful subway, by the way. The trip back to my apartment is boring. The train carriage is nearly empty, save for a few junior high school boys and a couple of women in business attire. I have a few seats all to myself, so I sprawl out and check my phone for messages. When I feel confident that no one in the carriage is watching, I decide to search for Corpse Girl's website on my phone. I don't exactly know how easy it would be to find. Maybe I should have asked Ali for the address. Well, a quick search shouldn't be too hard. I begin to type Corpse Girl's website. A few results pop up on my screen, but none seem relevant. There are links to funeral service and anime fan sites, but nothing really matched what I'm looking for. Maybe this is a bad idea. I should probably just delete my search history. Maybe just one more search. Corpse girl request uh, death. My phone seems to lag for a few seconds as the search is submitted, then a fresh list of links appear. The top result catches my eye immediately. This must be it. I click at the link and the website loads immediately. Are we in here? Oh, fire. Need this. Eat this. Let me get that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is going to be easy. Making thumbnails for this game is going to be stupid easy. The website is simple. There's a freaky little dancing girl at the top of the screen who looks too happy to be on such a site. The whole site is really basic. A small blurb of text offers instructions. Request a death. Fill out your victim's information and upload a photo of them. Your victim will receive a photo of their own corpse shortly before they die. Watch out. Don't be an idiot and enter your own information or you will be cursed. What the hell? Is this site actually for real? We about to find out. I want start to wonder if I should go through with this. There's very little useful information on the site. I mean, it does say request a death, but come on. Is someone actually going to go out and kill the person I choose? And how on earth can someone receive a photo of their own course before they're actually dead? That just doesn't make any sense. My heart suddenly skips a beat and I nearly drop my phone when it buzzes at me. Thank God. It's just a text message. If this is Kurosawa sending a picture. I need it. An unknown number. That's never a good thing. Wait a minute. There's a photo attachment. Who would be sending me a photo from an unknown number? My curiosity gets the better of me and I open the message. Let's fucking get it. Let's fucking go. This is exactly what I needed. Bitch, you about to die. Let's fucking go. Kurosawa, you freaking bitch. First off, I need this too. Because I can, like, steal that. I knew it. I knew she set me up. I'm not, and Amino and Sakiko were on it too. They made me process a fake refund to get cash out of the register so that my name would be on the transaction. And all for what? A bit of cash that they have to split three ways? I mean, you could easily just take this back to the store and show the manager and be like, Hey, yo, look at this. But this is much better. I like this. A few of the junior high school boys near the, nearby look at me with worried expressions, but I don't give a damn. I'm angry. I'm furious. Kurosawa is going to pay. I close Kurosawa's message and return to Corpse Girl's website. It's clear what has to be done. I'm going to request Kurosawa's death. I read the website instructions one more time to make sure I haven't missed anything important. Phone number. Upload a photo of the victim. 
She just gave me everything I needed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can't believe it. Kurosawa just signed her own death sentence. She sent me a photo of herself and her phone number was included with the message. I fill in the phone number and upload the photo, my hands trembling the whole time. My thumb hovers over the submit button. I feel a chill down my spine, my face turns pale, and I immediately feel cold and clammy. Is Kurosawa really going to die if I use this website, or is this all a sick hoax? I run through the possible outcomes in my head. First possibility, nothing happens and Kurosawa is none the wiser. Second possibility, Kurosawa gets pranked and by whoever is running this website. Maybe the administrator gets a kick from tormenting people. Kurosawa might just receive some spam text or something like that. Third possibility, Kurosawa dies. She gets murdered or some elaborate scheme is concocted to make her die accidentally. My lips curl into a frenzy smile. I like the third possibility the most. <laughs> I slam my thumb down and smash the submit button. Prepare for the end, Kurosawa. I hope she actually dies. I need this. Don't, don't be a prank, bro. Don't be a prank. No pranks, please. No pranks. When I get home, I can barely contain my nervousness. I'm shaking as I open the door to my apartment. It's apartment nice. By the time I walk through the door, the sun has just started to set behind the backdrop of the city. Even though it's not dark yet, I'm feeling physically and mentally drained. The drama at work this morning, the taunting laugh at Kurosawa, I feel exhausted. Like I just want to crawl on the bed and sleep. Despite my dipping energy levels, I can't extinguish the burning question flickering within my mind like a candle flame. How will I know when or if Kurosawa is dead? Will Corpse for Girls website notify me? No, of course not. I didn't give any of my personal information to the site. The entire thing was anonymous. And it's not like I didn't visit the store tomorrow and see if she comes into work. I'll be kicked out as soon as I show my face. So what do I do? <sighs> That's it. I whip out my phone out of my purse and open Noise, a social network app that all my co-workers are connected to. Kurosawa, Sakiko, Amino, and I are all in this group chat label work life. We use the chat to swap shifts with each other and complain about the boss. Just as I was hoping, I haven't been kicked out from the group yet. I swipe through the list of chat members and tap on Kurosawa's profile. Last online an hour ago. Perfect. If I use this app, I can keep an eye on when Kurosawa is active. She only has to be using her phone for noise to detect that she's online. She doesn't necessarily have to be using noise itself. This is all convenient, but I don't give a fuck. Let's get it. It's the best way I can think of to monitor if she's still alive or not. It will do it for now at least. I wonder why Kurosawa sent me that photo of herself via a regular text message instead of through noise. Maybe she thought she could be busted for it if someone got into her noise profile. Who knows what that girl was thinking. Regardless, I'm thankful she made such a stupid mistake. I wouldn't have obtained her phone number if she hadn't decided to message me through noise. Instead, after all, noise is strictly an online service. No need for phone numbers. Come to think of it, where did she get my phone number from? Well, no matter, it worked out in the end. I slump down on the couch in front of the TV and keep my phone firmly gripped in one hand, my knuckles whitening. I start to bite the fingernails on my other hand out of me. Like, bro, what if somebody, what if Kurosawa had also put Emmy on cor Corpse Girl and now they just, they just finna kill each other? That's fucked. In an attempt to distract myself, I switch the TV on and stream some stupid reality shows. The distraction hardly works and I find myself instinctively glancing at my phone every couple of minutes waiting for any kind of update on Kurosawa's online status. The evening passes slowly. What if they what if they end up killing each other and they, neither of them know it? That shit would be wild. Saturday morning. Hey, you ain't got no job. You ain't got to get up. Sunlight streams through the open curtains as I startle. Did I fall asleep on the couch? I wipe my mouth with my sleeve, cleaning off a trickle of drool from my chin. My phone is still in one hand and I quickly check it. I tap the fingerprint sm smear screen, but it's not responding. The battery died. I must have fallen asleep and left the screen on all night. I race towards my charger and plug it in, anxiously waiting for just enough energy to turn the phone screen back on. After what seems like an eternity, the phone comes to life. I catch a glimpse of the clock as I swipe the walk screen away. 6.34 AM. Damn. Open up noise as quickly as I can to flick through Kurosawa's profile. This profile is private. You are not connected to this person. Damn it! She blocked me. I frantically navigate to the group chat, only to find that I've been kicked out. Damn it! Damn it! What can I do now? I've got no way of knowing where the Kurosawa is still alive. Hey, this bitch wants her dead, and I need that shit, bro. Bro, bro, bro. I swear, if this game don't end up killing this girl, I'm a, I'm a lose my mind, okay? Cause it needs to happen, all right? She gotta go. She gotta go. She set she set up the homegirl. She gotta go. I slam my phone down in frustration, and it vibrates in retaliation. Huh? Another text message. I 
blink a couple of times. Who would be texting me at this hour? It might be Kurosawa again, trying to rub my face in her victory. Well, if that's the case, I would at least I would know that she's still alive. I hesitantly pick up my phone again and open the message. There's no text, just a photo attachment. What the hell is this? Oh yeah, you're about to die. I nearly dropped my phone in terror. A photo of a dead body, twisted, crumpled like it's fallen from a great height. A splatter of blood is freaked across the grass. It's hard to make out the details of the makeup. Dirty blonde hair, familiar clothes, so much makeup. It's me. There could be no mistaking it. Without a doubt, this is a picture of my own corpse. I shriek again, unable to process what I'm seeing. I'm so entranced by the battered corpse that it takes me a minute to notice the timestamp of the quarter of the photo. It's today's day, but something's off. The time says 7.28 a.m. There's about an hour from now. I shiver involuntarily and feel the sickening sensation of bile rising in my throat. Who ordered your death? Is this a prediction of my death? Am I going to die within the hour? And then the truth hits me harder than my face hit the ground in this grisly photo. When you request a death on Corpse Girl's website, you or your victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Before they die. I can't look at it anymore. I throw my phone to the side and curl up on the floor. Did Corpse Girl send this to me? And how? How did somebody get a photo of my corpse? A photo that is seemingly from the future. It's impossible. It has to be a hoax. Some trick. Some psycho tormenting me. That's all it is. Someone is messing with me. Well, Emmy, see you later. Probably Karsawa. I get up off the floor and stuff. I, I'm, li I'm, I'm literally a goat because I, because th I thought about this. I thought about what if somebody just talks about Emmy dying? That's so fucked, bro. She's just gonna die. She's just gonna die without seeing the revenge. I get up off the floor and stumble around. I'm kind of lightheaded and unbalanced, so my stomach feels queasy, ready to launch its contents through my throat at any second. I blindly reach around for my phone and finally grasp it with near-frozen fingers. The phone number that sent the photo, it's an unknown number, but the digits don't match the number that Kurosawa texted me from yesterday. So it's unlikely this came from her. Bizarrely, the phone number is kind of weird. There are more digits than should be possible. I try to count them, but stumble a few times in confusion. I eventually conclude that the number has 18 digits, way too many. In addition, the phone number seems to repeat digits a lot. 666-33-666-22-666-44-666. That's a lot of sixes. Yeah, you're cooked. It seems too strange to be real. Is it possible to fake a phone number? Something interesting catches my attention. Even though the caller ID doesn't recognize the number, it has data on the origin of the number. Tokyo, Japan, my very own city. Perhaps the sender of the photo can match their number, but can't hide their location. This gives me an idea and I decide to get to the bottom of the situation despite my head throbbing and my stomach pleading to be emptied. I punch the phone number into a search engine along with the keyword Tokyo. One result. The, link's, the link points to a popular discussion board, Noise Channel. It's an anonymous board where users can talk about almost anything. And no big surprise, it's owned by and operated by the very same company behind the noise app I use on my phone. I tap the link and get taken to a discussion topic from less than a week ago. I quickly lead through it. Strange photo from unknown number. Hey, so today I got a strange gore photo from a number I don't have in my contacts. Not sure what the deal is. It was gross, though. Wondering if any hackers can trace the number or something. Seems like Tokyo area. I'm in Osaka. Thanks in advance. The topic has only one reply. You got this too? Was the gore photo a picture of yourself? I'm worried. Received or similarly picked from the same number. Thinking about contacting the police. Not sure if I'm overreacting. And that's it. Into the discussion. Need to post or follow it up on the conversation. That's all. They're both dead. That's why. That didn't give me anything to go on, except now I know that at least two other people have received bloody photos of themselves. I wonder if those photos were as extreme as the ones I received. What happened to these two posters? Why didn't they continue the discussion? I feel myself beginning to sweat. My body is going from cold to hot back again several times a minute. It feels like I have a fever, but I notice the stress tearing me up. I check the time. It's 6.59, about half an hour into the time printed on the photo. There you, there you go. There's your death. I take a deep breath and the doorbell buzzes. I freeze in place, unsure, unsure whether or not I should answer the door. In this sketchy apartment building, it's a risk to answer the door on any given day before even taking into consideration that some psycho just texted me a photo of my own corpse. I tip towards, towards the door on stiff legs and gaze through the peephole. There's no one there. I breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe I'm just on edge and the doorbell echoes from someone else's apartment. Besides, I don't know anyone who would visit me unannounced, especially this early in the morning. I slump to the floor, my back sliding down as I con 
come to rest on the carpet. My legs splayed out haphazardly in front of me. I've had enough fear for one day. I just have to, I have to just believe this whole thing is a hoax. It's probably karma for trying to get revenge on Kurosawa. Yeah, that's it, karma. Yeah, you're cooked. The doorbell rings again and I scream in shock, my head slamming back against the door I was resting against. I jump to my feet and ignore the peephole, this time simply swinging the door wide open. Bye. A gust of chilly morning air sweeps into my apartment and I shut my eyes tightly against the sudden cold. My messy hair tangles in the wind obscures my vision when I open my eyes. Quickly, I sweep the hair out of my face and look around. There's no one here except... A metal trolley is blocking the walkway in front of my door. A stark white bag about the size of a human body rests atop the trolley. My heart begins to race as I immediately recognize what this is. On TV, they always show these trolleys using morgues to carry dead bar cart dead bodies around. Dead bodies. The vomit that has been trying to escape my body all morning, all morning finally finds its way out of my mouth. I, re I reach and heave in the doorway until nothing is left inside my belly instead of the stinging stomach acid that threatens to burn through its fleshy container. The stench wafting from the trolley is overwhelming. Pinching my nostrils closed down a little more than trap hor- Pinching my nostrils closed down, closed, what the fuck? I can't read. Pinching my nostrils closed does little more than trap the horrific odor inside my own skull and I gag and splutter involuntarily. My hand reaches forward as though controlled by some being other than myself. I can't pull it back and I can't prevent my fingers from grasping the zipper attached to the front of the body bag. I unzip the bag. Oh yeah, you're, and there I am. A wretched corpse disposed of the day's first rays of sunlight. I stand here in the doorway as I lay there atop the trolley, simultaneously alive and dead, but more dead than alive in both bodies. The bruising on my face is horrific, and I reach a stiff finger to my own lips, my living lips, tracing the outlines of the bruise I see before me. There's no pain where the bruise should be, and if I breathe a sigh of relief, for why would there be any pain if I'm already dead? To feel pain would be absurd, and then I would really have to start worrying. I wonder how I died. Did I fall from a great height? Did someone hit me with a car? Did I collapse from some internal reason? Perhaps from organ failure or some undiagnosed sickness? Maybe I didn't die and the corpse in front of me is alive, living and breathing just as I do while standing in front of myself. Maybe this is all a prank I pulled on myself, dying just as I... Dying just as a joke, but never really dying. Always living until the point as I actually die and it's no longer a prank. Oh, she's gone crazy. My head is splitting. I can't think straight. All the thoughts in my mind are jumbled. The meaning behind unspoken words disappeared behind foggy clouds and shattered my shattered skull. To clear my head, I step around my corpse to stand by the walkway's railing. I'm on the fourth floor of the apartment building. There are two floors above me, so I could just go higher if I wish. But I'm pretty sure a leap from here will be enough to render my living body identical to that of the corpse on the trolley. At this point in time, there exists two versions of Emi Katsuna. One is living, and is me, and the other is dead, but is also me. I can choose now to be alive and dead, or to be dead and dead, but I cannot choose to be alive and alive. So even if I chose to be alive and dead, I'll still only be half alive. But choosing dead and dead is nice and clean, absolute, and indisputably solid state of existence. I grip the cool steel handrail and lean over the walkway, my hair whipping against my face thanks to the relentless wind. Four stories below me is a small courtyard paved with concrete and decorated with the occasional shrub or flower bed. I miss the concrete by about two feet. What the fuck? Dirt sprays up into the air as my nose is crushed under my own body weight. I think about that photo Kurosawa sent me with her smug smile and her hands full of stolen money. My teeth grind into my tongue and sever it. It doesn't manage to escape my closed mouth. My mind waters and settles on, settles on Corpse Girl's website. What was that all about, anyway? As far as I know, nothing happened when I submitted Kurosawa's details. <laughs> Maybe Kurosawa found the website as well and submitted my details first. I guess Corpse Girl got me. Well played, Kurosawa. I think I could taste blood in my mouth, but it might just be a memory from some other point in my lifetime. The blinking light from a nearby parked car kind of irritates me. Then my vision turns blue or black, and my only concern is how I'll never truly know what. That was insane. That was nuts. That was fucking... Wow, that was nuts. So she killed her. So... so Act 1, Noriko Kurosawa... Like the Kurosawa? No way they about to make me play as this girl. Who 
is this? This is the girl from the from the opening. Wait, bro, hold on. I'm so confused. So does Corpse Girl actually kill people or does it force people to commit suicide? Was she was there even a trolley there or was it or was it just like she just went crazy? Like the stress just ate her ate her away until she decided to jump. That's insane. I've always liked the shape of my eyes. I can be critical about other parts of my body, but I'll never complain about my eyes. With or without makeup, I think they look great. Mother used to tell me I inherited her eyes and my big sister inherited father's eyes. To be honest, I don't see any of father's features in myself or my sister, but I do agree that my eyes are the exact replicas of mother's. Mother doesn't see too well anymore and that might be something I have to also worry about in the future. But for now, my eyes are perfect and I couldn't be happier with them. I wear eyeshadow and eyeliner to bring out my best features. Some people tell me I use too much makeup, that I tend to overdo it and make myself look intimidating. But I don't really care. I'm most likely, I mostly like the way I look and honestly, how many people can claim the same? Today's morning ritual is the same as any other workday. I'm a slave to the wage and I'm not proud of it. Call me a corporate sellout, but I can't survive without money. My alarm goes off at 6 a.m., the shower is running by 6.05, and I'm dry and dressed by 6.15. Damn, only a 10 minute shower? I'd be in that bitch for at least 20 minutes. I skip breakfast because I'm watching my figure and spend until 6.30 working on my makeup. I'm out of my cramped shoebox apartment by 6.45 a.m. Sometimes I catch my neighbor returning home from his overnight shift, and if so, I exchange simple pleasantries with him and continue on my way. Today, is no, there is no sign of my neighbor, so I don't slow down as I descend the stairs and make and exit the building. Hitting the convenience store for a can of coffee saps another few minutes from each day. I prefer sweet milk coffees, but every now and then I'm in the mood for a rich black coffee. Regardless, I never start the day without it. I don't always need the energy boost, but it helps to stop my stomach growling. There's no way you're drinking coffee on an empty stomach and that's okay. I'd get fucked up. If it's a, it's a milk coffee kind of day, so I pay for my favorite brand and get out of the store in no time. The can of coffee dives into my handbag as I continue on my way. The train station is always busy in the morning, and it's usually a struggle to navigate my way to the correct platform in time for the 7-12 a.m. train. Today is no different. However, I always make it into time because my routine has been perfected over the last few months. I board the train bound for Shinjuku. A cursory glance reveals there are no empty seats, so I push through the throng of bodies and stand against the carriage wall. Whenever there are seats available, I like to sit and read, but it's much more common to have to stand and stare at my phone screen like almost everyone else. When I do read, I leave the classics, Stoker, Lovecraft, Poe, or Western horror at that is my favorite genre. And of course, faithful translations into Japanese are as good as it gets. My English isn't nearly strong enough to read these novels in their original language. If I'm stuck staring at my phone screen, I'd like to stalk people online. Acquaintances or the few friends I have lead such boring lives. They post about the most mundane topics all day every day, acting like they'll shrivel up and die unless they get the attention they seek. I find their dull, tedious lies simply fascinating. From behind the safety of a glass veil, I can fulfill my voyeuristic fetishes and consume as much pointless information as I desire. Knowing every mundane tidbit of people's daily lives turns me on. This morning is the same as any other. I stare down at the phone held in my frail hand. My fingers move with their own accord, scrolling and tapping against the backlit display, pausing, pondering, pouncing on any post or picture that my pupils haven't yet consumed. Staying in the train carriage, packed to the gills with people, I can't help but feel my face getting flushed and my steamy breath escaping my lips. I digest post after post, photo after photo, mesmerizing the comings and goings of every single person on my noise activity feed. I catch my breathing getting heavier, my gas becoming sharp and sharp. Ray went to the dentist yesterday for a root canal. Mizuno shares some photos from her international vacation. Kawahara objects to owning pets and thinks all animals should be free. My cheeks glow crimson. My chest begins rising and falling quickly. I clutch the collar of my shirt. Knuckles whitening, knee shaking. A few of the people in the carriage start to move away from me, but I barely notice them. My fingers keep scrolling and I hit the jackpot. A new post from a coworker at my office. Tomo Watanabe, she's a gal girl. The type with a heavy fake tan, bleached blonde hair and questionable clothes. I hate her, but I love her post. This morning update reads, Tomo Mo. Just found this corpse girl website. Such fake bull. <laughs> Wanted, waiting to meet a bitch to try it on. 
Tomo just discovered Core School's website, huh? I feel a slight squeal trying to escape from my throat as my legs threaten to buckle underneath me. I can't take the excitement anymore and I have to force my phone from my hands and bury it at the phone of my handbag. Deep breaths, Noriko, deep breaths. I need to calm down and control myself. Composure is key. I close my eyes and let a cool breath of air whistle throughout my slightly parted lips. How do you hate this girl, but yet you over here getting getting horny off of her posts on noise? This is crazy. Feeling a little calmer and no longer ready to explode, I analyze the information I just read. Tomo wants to try out Corpse Girl's website. That's good. That's very, very good. Rumor has it that you can visit the website and request the death of somebody you know. How and if the victim dies isn't known to the public. Because of that, some people were pretty quick to dismiss the site as a hoax. However, the most interesting part isn't how or if the victim dies, but rather what happens to the victim before they die. Supposedly, the victim will receive a photo of their own corpse. How this photo exists before the victim's life is snuffed out isn't public knowledge, but the thought of this phenomenon occurring is utterly intriguing. Nevertheless, the site has been gaining popularity lately, at least in certain corners of the internet. Message boards like Noise Channel and other similar sites have been picked up on the rumors and like to exaggerate the website's authenticity. This shit sounds like Twitter and Discord mixed into one. <laughs> Noise is crazy. The fact that someone like Tomoe, a rather dense, dim-witted individual, has discovered the website means that it's actually more well-known than I previously thought. It means that people are actually talking about it outside of the internet. Chances are good that Tomo will want to try it out and request the death of someone in the office, a co-worker. Me, perhaps. She hates my guts as much as I hate hers. Finally, something exciting is going to happen in our dull war place. This girl is... This... What? The next station is Shinjuku. The doors on the right side will open. Please change here for the Chuo line, the Shonan Shinjuku line, the Saikyo line. As the automated announcement readies, reads through a list of connecting train lines, I get ready to disembark. The train pulls to a stop and I contort my body around the other passengers in the attempt to exit the train. Finally free to the tangled mass of flesh, I hasten my pace and navigate through the labyrinth station. I take the exit closest to my office and settle into a slower walk. I'm on time, and I never desire to reach the office any earlier than needed. It doesn't take long for the looming office tower to enter my field of vision. 32 stories of office space all crammed into one sleek, slim tower. The name Timujin is stamped across a structure in gigantic block letters. If you're looking for this building in Shinjuku, you can't possibly miss it. Timujin carries the Chado, Japan's third biggest banking corporation. It's a gigantic company with the other branches in Kyoto, Osaka, Sapporo, Fukuoka, and a dozen smaller cities I don't even remember. I've worked here for close to three months now, not a long time in the grand scheme of things. That said, I'm only a temp and all I do is data entry. I work on the 14th floor along with the about other 60 other junior employees, including gal girl Tomo Watanabe. I don't speak to many of my coworkers, that's the way I like it. When I reach the building, I enter through the giant double sliding doors I find myself in the familiar lobby. Comfortable couches like the wall circling a reception desk. Four large elevators are tucked away in a nook behind the reception desk. It's already busy this morning, though to be fair, this place is packed all the time. I avoid the crowds of sharply dressed business people, feeling a little out of place in my semi-formal shirt and skirt. Ducking into a newly opened elevator, I tap my employee ID card to a backlit panel and press the button for my floor. The doors close and the elevator begins a smooth ascent. I'm surprised to find that I'm the only one traveling up. I reach my floor and listen to the soothing chime as the door opens, revealing the open layout office before me. The static drone of workspace noise fills my ears. Conversation, ringing phones, fingers tapping against keyboards, photocopiers. Even the steady low hum of the air conditioner con contributes to the overall din. I make my way to my desk, stationed in the middle of the floor and surrounded by a dozen other identical desks. As I walk, somebody taps me on the shoulder gently. Good morning, Kurosawa. Ah, Shinya Fuki Fujikawa, my senior, though he's really only a couple months older than me. He's worked here for a whole year after taking an internship straight out of senior high school. He's not an intern anymore, though I'm not quite sure of his job title. Morning, Fujikawa. Huh? How was your commute this morning? Fine. Same as usual. 
That voice sounds familiar. I need a longer sentence. That's good to hear. I, uh, did you read any of your novels? He's referring to the horror books I like to read. I can tell from his tone that he doesn't exactly approve of the subject matter. I've known Shinya since junior high. We go way back, but I wouldn't exactly call us friends. That boy likes you. However, he is the one that landed me this job, even though it's just a temporary contract. I've always had this feeling that he's a bit sweet on me. I could be way off the mark, though. Well, I couldn't get a seat on the train today. Too hard to read while standing. I know exactly who that is. That's Erica Harlacher. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. That's the goat right there. That's the goat. Ah, that's a shame. Um, you, uh, still haven't accepted my, uh, friend request, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I have to fight the urge to roll my eyes. He's a nice guy, but we were connected on noise once before and I had to delete him. He's super obsessed with his father's detective work and all he ever posts about is his assumptions and theories on petty crime cases. Normally I find anyone on my friends list fascinating, but here's the thing, Shinya never posts about his personal life. All he writes are long-winded rants on boring cases. It's far beyond the amount of dullness I, even I can stand. I fish my phone out of my hand and pretend that I'm looking at noise. Oh, how about that? Looks like I don't have any incoming friend requests. This is fucked. I quickly dip my phone back into my bag. <laughs> how peculiar. Oh, this is cringe. Try and nudge again later. Oh, this is cringe. Oh, wow, this is cringe. Hel sure, no problem. I'm fucking struggling. Hell. Well, anyway, I better get to it. Ah. Work hard today, okay? You got it. My boy Shinya, dog. Shinya offers a formal bow and goes on his way. Before I can take a step towards my desk, a mocking voice whispers in my ear. How long are you gonna lead on, sweet little Shinya? That voice is beautiful. I shiver and find Tomoe Watanabe lurking right behind me, buzzing around my neck like an irritating mosquito. That poor boy really has the hots for ya. When are you gonna tell him you're a cold-hearted psycho? Listen, I'm not leading him on, and I'm no psycho. Huh, sounds like something a real psycho type would say, don't you reckon? Of course, this is none other than that gal girl Tomoe, the very same brain-dead moron who posted this morning about wanting to try Corpse Girl's website. She's the kind of person that likes to stir up trouble and instigate conflict. She's had her vacant eyes on me since the day I first stepped foot in the office. She loves to torment me any chance she gets. Maybe I rubbed her the wrong way somehow, though I'm not sure what I ever did to her. Even though she's a data entry temp like me, she's worked here just a little longer than I have. Unfortunately, that means I have to- what? Wait, 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 wait. I missed it. Unfortunately, that means I have to defer to her as my superior in this professional environment. She knows as much and likes to take advantage of the fact as often as possible. Bro, Japanese culture is so strange with the superior shit. Like, like I've worked with people who, I've worked with people in my job who are like 10 years older than me and have worked at that bitch for 20 fucking years or something like that. We got the same fucking job title and we get paid the same amount. The only superior above me is my super, my boss, but no, but like if we both take data temps, I'm not deferring to you as my supervisor with, because you worked for two weeks or you, more than me, fuck, fuck you. What are you talking about? It's funny, you know, he don't look like the type of skank to lead on a goody goody like Shinya. You just gonna call her a skank straight out the, I love this game. I told you, I'm not leading him on. Well, if you're not interested, Maybe I'll take him out this weekend and tongue him at the cinema. What do you mean by that? Uh, gross. Do what you want, but I doubt he's into someone with your, uh, looks. Oh, yeah? What would you know? You think he likes your flat chest, little Miss Gothic Lolita? I know I should shrug off comments such as this, and normally I would, but backing down from Tomoe is something I can do easily. I'll give you a tip. Guys like Shinya are smart. Clever. If you want to impress him, don't let him know your head is as full of air as your inflatable breast. We cooking. We are cooking. We are absolutely cooking. Let's fucking go. A flash of crimson lights up as Tomoe's face and she looks ready to lash out at me. A group of co-workers, juniors like us, look over to us in concern. Tomoe takes a step back from me, but not before signaling a rude gesture with her fingers. We ain't done here, Noriko. Watch your back. I'm trembling. Tomoe walks away and I breathe a sigh of relief. If it wasn't for having to deal with her, I wouldn't dread coming to work every day. Anyway, I wonder when she is planning to test out Corpse Girl Warp Height. Will she try it on me since we just fought? 
I'm not really sure if I should be excited or scared. Either way, it will definitely be fun to find out what happens if she does try the website. I finally reached my desk and take note of the time. I was supposed to start working five minutes ago, so I quickly log into my computer and check today's task list. It's all standard stuff today. I need to transfer a few tables of numbers from a spreadsheet into our company's online database. When I'm done, I have to run it by a few other people and then commit the changes to the server. The work is dull and repetitive, but my salary isn't bad. On the plus side, I get to wear headphones and listen to music while I work. I dip into my handbag and retrieve my headphones, my phone, a can of milk coffee, and a handful of breath mints. I lay them all out on my desk neatly. I slip my headphones on, plug them into my phone, and hit play on my work playlist. A loud, symphonic metal loving thrashes my ears as I crack open the can of coffee and take a long sip. Okay, let's get started. We are going to turn the fuck up on this game. I am locked the fuck in, dog. Erica Harlatch is in this game. Somebody already fucking died. We got a gal with big titties. I'm I'm locked in, okay? I'm locked in. I'm here. I'm here with it, okay? We we I'm here. I'm I'm fucking here. You feel me? I'm here. Once again, if you haven't already, please subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that I upload. I also stream on this channel, so if you guys like streams, please come chill with me on the streams. I'd love to have you around. Join my Discord to keep in touch with me, keep in touch with the community, and stay up to date on whenever I'm uploading a video, whether I'm going live or just whatever I'm thinking at the time. I'd really love to have you. The Discord link is down in the description. Also, all my other social media links are down in the description. Jo follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. I'd love to have you a part of my community. Let's build this shit together. I ain't got nothing else to say. I'm going to get my ass up out of here. This game's fire. Corp Factory. We, we fucking cooking, okay? This is going to be some fun shit. Uh, everybody stay safe. Stay healthy. And as always, we move. i see you next time.